Hello everybody, thank you for joining us today. You are part of the 260 people worldwide who have registered to view this webcast powered by YOL development dedicated to fan out packaging. My name is Faisal El Kamasi. I'm a global sales support and coordinator for YOL development. Before we get started with the WebEx, with this webcast, I would like to give you some information regarding the logistic. So you have the possibility during this webcast to submit questions. In order to do so, you simply have to use the box at the bottom of the screen labeled Ask a Question. We will answer as many questions today as time permits. And for the remaining question, we'll do our best to, to answer in, uh, within a week. Okay, so concerning the, the, material, the material and the content, please note that the presentation is available and downloadable in the resources section. You will also receive an email after the webcast within 24 hours with a link to the recorded session. So today, YOL Development and System Plus Consulting will share their analysis for you on fanout packaging. First, let's start with an update on the field of fanout packaging and the latest market and technology development presented by Jerome Azemar, activity developer in advanced packaging and manufacturing at YOL Development. Jerome, please. Thank you very much, Faisal, and hi, everybody. Glad to be here uh, with so many attendees worldwide. Uh, today, I would like to talk about Tana packaging. I will first give you an outline of my uh, speech. I would like to first go through this outline then. So we'll start with a fan out packaging principle and definition, just to make sure uh, we are able to understand what we are talking about. Then we'll focus on applications and players, then technologies and roadmaps, then market analysis, then a focus on panel, which is a very hot topic at the moment uh, within the fan out industry, and eventually the conclusions before giving the mic to uh, the following presentation of System Plus. So let's start with the fan out packaging principle and definitions. Uh, first of all, let's use this, uh, uh, this slide here where you see the basic uh, uh, type of fan out process. Commonly in the industry, we agree to call, the, to call a fan out when we have this kind of, of process as you can see on the slide. So you take a carrier, you deposit the tape, so you laminate the tape. On top of that, you pick and place a different dye you want to embed in your fan out packaging. Then you deposit a mold compound. With this mold compound, basically, you create a reconstituted wafer. Then you debond this reconstituted wafer from the carrier. And then you can perform your standard um, interconnections through an RDL process. Once this is done, you can dice, and then you will have your different packages uh, uh, cut and, and terminated from this reconstituted wafer. So you can mention that this package is fanned out. It's, it's a fan out because the interconnections are fanned out of the surface of the chip, as you can see at the bottom of the, of the chart. So in that case, you see the copper lines that are getting out of the chip surface thanks to the mold, uh, uh, mold beyond, uh, above it. So basically, you have a fan out package. This is just an example of fan out. You have different flavors of fan out. But basically, you can see here that what constitutes a fan out is the fact that you do not have an advanced substrate below the chip, the fact that the dyes are embedded in a mold compound, and the fact that the interconnections are fanned out of the chip surface. So let's move on and see what are the key differentiators of this type of approach. So why do we have so much interest in fan out packaging at the moment? Well, it's because since, as I mentioned, you, ha you have some characteristics uh, um, in the fan out, such as the fact that you remove the substrate, this brings a lot of added values. For instance, the fact that you reduce uh, uh, the thickness, thanks to the fact that you remove uh, uh, the advanced substrate, is key. You have an impact on the form factor, you have a thinner package, and this may be very important in a lot of applications for instance, in telecom. Other added value, the fact that you have short interconnections allows you to have lower uh, inductance issues, higher electrical performance in terms of frequencies, in terms of leakage. So all this together allows the fan out to really be a, a good package. Something else, the flexibility in terms of design. 
As you can see on this chart, the, the interconnection that spans out of the chip surface, which means you're not dependent of which kind of chip you have. If you have a small or a large one, whatever the space you have below the chip surface, you can fan out of the chip surface your connections and do your bumping around below, sorry. So that means eventually you're kind of flexible in terms of what you can embed and whatever the chip size is, you will manage to make your package. So overall, lots of added values in fan out. The problem is, uh, since the principle of fanning out the interconnections out of this chip surface is rather common in a lot of different types of packages, and also the fact that fan out packaging is very trendy at the moment, especially now that Apple has used it with TSMC fan out, now a lot of people are calling everything fan out. So it's important to make a segmentation and be able to really compare apples to apples. So if you see on this slide, first, if we start just by the main definition of fan out, the fact that you embed your die and that the, the interconnection are fanned out of the IC surface, you have two main ways of doing so. You can embed your die in an organic laminate or you can embed your die in a mole compound. If you uh, go in the mole compound or in the organic laminate, in both cases below, you see all the ways of performing this, different solutions. You can, for example, if it's in a laminate, you can dig a, dig a cavity, if it's a, uh, or you can laminate around the chip. If you go in the mole compound, you have different ways of making your RDL. You can use also substrate, and you can, you can pick your place and put it in a different position, chip first, chip last, face up, face down. I will go more into details in the following slide. But basically, you see you have different flavors, so it's important to really make a clear definition. So this is a definition here that we propose at your development. The first one, you understood it, it's the fact that the interconnections are fanned out of the chip scale, so basically you have a fan out. But more than that, we define a fan out if the die is embedded in a mold compound, and if the interconnections are not used in, in or made in an advanced substrate. So then in, you have to use an RDL type of interconnection. If you have both cases, then you're really talking about what we do call fan out packaging at your development. Other solutions using other strategies can be defined differently. I will give you an example. The fact that you have advanced substrate as, a, as an interconnection type uh, instead of an RDL, we call that a flip chip because in that case, you will not have a reconstituted wafer. You really flip your die on top of a substrate. And this is using a different manufacturing line with different feature sizes. So all this together, we do not consider this as a pure fan out because it's not the same market targeted and not the same kind of solutions. So that was just to put clear definition and segmentation. Now let's see why fan out is so interesting, where we can find it and who is basically dealing with it. First of all, let's look at the applications. As you can see on this slide, the main application is actually in mobile. Mobile means lots of volume, but also a lot of requirements. So you see in orange here on this slide, the main application for fan out, uh, the, the applications that are already existing in mobile. So you can see there baseband, RF, PMIC PMUs. So this is a comfort zone of fan out. That means single die embedding, not so many IOs, easy to embed things where you need something cheap, robust, with electric, uh, with good electric performance, and something small. Everything that FANAL can achieve. You also see the application processor with the example of uh, Apple iPhone. You had the A A10 that were already packaged in FANAL. The A11, it was confirmed recently, is also packaged in FANAL. So you see a potential also for more complex application within a phone than just baseband, CMIC, and so on. Really something with larger amount of IOs. So complex application. And in the future, we can expect more. You see on the right side of the slide that you have more applications than simply in telecom, in mobile. You also have applications in, in, in cars, so, such as radars. We'll discuss more about that in this presentation and also in the system plus presentation. You have some applications also in IoT and medical. You have some examples on this slide. If you look at the potential of fan out, basically, you have to understand what are the potential applications first. So it's not the same thing to package a small baseband die or a very complex FPGA. On this slide here, you see the difference uh, uh, in density of this different application that fan out could potentially target. So you see a very simple application on the bottom left, and you have some, you have some very complex application on the top right. The line in the middle is splitting in two 
what we consider two different markets for fan out. The core market is below, so single buy most of the time, not so many IOs, not so high density. And on top of that, you have what we call HD fan out for high density fan out, where you have more complex things, and you already have examples with the application processes. So how can fan out address this market? Well, as we mentioned, you have several fan outs, but you also have several architectures of fan outs. So the core market is actually the one you have on the bottom left. You see that you have already single chip fan outs already available in high volume. And you have the application processor with the example of TSMC in the middle. So that's in the case where you have a fan out package and package. So the first package below is the, the one of the processor. It's a fan out and on top of that you have your VRAM. And then if you go to higher end on the top right, you see that FanOut could potentially address more complex applications uh, such as processors, so GPUs, CPUs, maybe going even in, in FPGA or even complex systems where you embed also memories. And one way to address that, for example, is to put the FanOut on a substrate. If you do so, then you could potentially embed larger dies that one can fan out, that what FanOut can do initially and address new markets. Let's focus on existing market now to justify the fact that FanOut penetrated well. Here on this slide, you see an example with the application processors. So here you see that basically on the last generation of, of smartphones, Samsung Qualcomm and Apple solutions. This slide allows you to make a comparison in terms of thickness. Of course, you have to take into account all the parameters such as cost, performance, but just to make you visualize the added value of FanOut, this slide speaks a lot. You see the Samsung solution is a standard flip chip. You see that Qualcomm chose the MCEP solution of Shinko. And you see that FanOut enabled Apple to have a uh, package and package for application processor much thinner than their competitors. So FanOut added value here was clearly demonstrated. So you see really an added value of this type of package for this application. Another application we could focus on would be, for instance, the radar application for, for automotive. My colleague Stefan uh, will mention more about this in his presentation, but here the added value of FanOut is similar. You have something thin, you have a very good electric performance, which is very key in the case of, uh, of a radar, when you need to be able to, to address um, uh, application at 77 gigahertz, which is key for detection and for ADAS applications. So in that case, you already see FanOut in volume with main leaders in the market, such as Bosch, Continental, and so on. So that's the reason why actually a lot of people are interested in FanOut for different applications, not only mobile players. So on this map here, you see a non-exhaustive map of plenty of people that are actually looking at the different uh, uh, possibilities for FanOut. Some manufacturers, some customers, you see the big name we mentioned before, Qualcomm, Apple, you see plenty of manufacturers. So it's because this diversity of players is representative of the diversity of the potential market. If you need to uh, focus on the, on the manufacturers, We'll see that on the next slide. You have already quite a lot of them, but with different trends. Actually, uh, you have some players that are in the game for quite some time, DWLB manufacturers. You have TSMC in the game for a few years, but that really changed a lot. But you can see that actually we are far from having only one fan out. So I think it's important to discuss about the different technologies, and that's what we will do in the following section. But before doing so, I want to mention that it's not only a question of different technologies, it's also a question of different strategies and different orientation depending on which type of manufacturer you are. If you look here on this slide, what, what is the core fan out? So I told you in the bit, uh, at the, some slides ago on the bottom left, you do have a core fan out market which is addressed by OSAT. This OSAT are actually trying to go higher end to address more complex applications. You do have a high density fan out, which is so far mainly constituted by application processors. And in that case, you do have TSMC, potentially Semco in the, if they manage to take some market share. And these two players are actually positioned really on APE, but they want to enlarge this market. And above that, you may have a potential for fan out for even larger and denser applications. And in that case, you may have different types of players. TSMC has a foundry but also OSAT that may uh, go in the direction. So depending on which market you want to look at, you may have different technologies, but also different supply chains. Let's focus now on the different technologies and roadmaps associated. 
As I mentioned in one of the previous slides, you saw that you have different types of fanouts. We can classify them per license, and you will see that actually you have quite a diverse uh, uh, landscape so far, and it's still moving. So you have some very installed solutions, such as the EWLB. That's the first fan out to actually have reached volume production since 2009. The technology was developed before, but the real production volume happened in 2009. So this one is already in mass production. It's already accepted by big wireless mobile customers. And one of the key added value of the solution is actually that it's licensed by several manufacturers. So this is enabling multi-sourcing. You do have there Nanium, which is now Amcor, JSIS Starship Pack, and AEC that can provide this kind of technology. Very well widespread. That's the most widespread fan out technology at the moment. You have RCP that was developed by Freescale, which is now NXP and it was licensed to NEPES. This one was more focused on NXP portfolio, so with a more limited uh, success. And actually now it's even more limited because NXP starts to be supplied with other solutions and NEPES is also providing different type of, uh, of fan out. You have a newcomer, the M-Series, so the technology developed by, by DECA, in which they have a, an innovative adaptive patterning to deal with die shift. This one was uh, licensed by, by ASC this year. And it's a very promising solution. ASC is building a line to, to, uh, to make it volume soon. And you have other fan out technology manufacturers that came up with their solution. So for example, Amcor with their chip lab, TSMC with their info, lots of success for TSMC, and other players trying to enter this game like PTI. PTI is actually coming with a lot of different uh, solutions, chip first, chip last, on panel, on wafers. So lots of activity around fan out at the moment with potential newcomers. Why do you have so many technologies? So as I mentioned, it's a question of business, but not only, it's also a question of technical challenges. Fanout has some issues. It cannot address everything because it's not a perfect package like every other package. You have to deal with different technical challenges such as those that you have on this slide. Basically, you have to deal with warpage, with topography, with die shift, and all of this is impacting your reliability and, and the, the, what your package can achieve. And this is the reason why you have so many technologies, because depending on what you want to embed, you may have to deal with different technology challenges, and you have different ways of doing so. An example, for instance, would be DECA dealing with die shift. They came up with this solution of adaptive patterning to deal with that. So plenty of technologies, because still technical challenges not fully addressed or not perfectly, and all this shall be done at the lower cost possible to gain some market share. If you look at the landscape, actually, of innovation, you have quite a lot of innovation still ongoing in fan out, despite the fact that now it's already on the market for some years. On this slide here, you see the quantity of patents uh, uh, dealing with this topic within the last years, and you see that it's growing, 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 22% of KVAR uh, within the last years. For 2017, it's not fully completed yet because uh, the year is not ended, but we also expect that it will be even higher. So lots of people are investigating fan out at the moment. If you look player for player, TSMC is the big leader there, so big investment in order to catch the, the market of, of, uh, of Apple. But a lot of other players are there. Stachy Pack, Infineon, a historical player. Amcor invested a lot, quite a lot of members. You can see also newcomers, newcomers coming from uh, China, for instance. So the game may change and some appearance of new players may, may, may occur. And we do expect that this will provide quite a lot of new things for, for, for fan out. So for example, in terms of roadmaps, we do expect that you will have more and more diversity in the architectures. For example, you will have more POP, more system and package, more uh, uh, opportunity to use the integration power of, of fan out. For example, through putting fan out on the substrate to have larger dies, or for, to stack different fan outs, or to embed different types of dies. And this will appear more and more in the future and enable larger markets for FANAT. So if we talk about the market, actually, let's go in more detail into this. As I mentioned before, we do see a dual market for FANAT due to different types of players, but also different types of technologies and different potential there. You do have a core FANAT. This one is actually not mature but it's sustainable. We, we see it growing and it will keep growing in the future. It's already quite large, $320 million in 2016. And um, it will grow again thanks to a lot of different parameters. For example, the price. The price of fan out went down. It's now starting to be more and more competitive versus other packages. 
the volume demands that are already addressed uh, and, and supplying large manufacturers such as Qualcomm in mobile, the fact that larger uh, customer or other customers are aware of the capability of Fanart and actually that this package is now becoming trendy thanks to TSMC and Apple deal. The fact that you have more and more qualification made, so the time for, for the customer to really check the capability of the package has, done, has been done. And the buzz, thanks to TSMC Apple deal that we mentioned. One point to mention is that you have some fluctuation though. For instance, Qualcomm at the beginning of the year reduced their demand of fan out, but started again. So the core market is there and it's sustainable, but still it may vary depending on the competition. You do have another type of market though, the high density fan out market, which is so far constituted by only one uh, product, the application processor of Apple packaged by TSMC. So it's a huge one because the volume and the price is big, but the, the, it's so far limited to only one application. Though the potential is very high because if other players choose fan out for the application processor, the market may come uh, huge in a very small amount of time. And that's what we do expect. But uh, uh, it's not the case yet, so it's only a matter of expectation. If we focus more actually on this application processor package, it's very important to take into account a, a few uh, few details because this market is interesting and big, it's true, but it's not for everyone. So high expectation because uh, the first product uh, have appeared already, it was the A10, the second one is the A11, so the capability of Fanout was demonstrated, this is a very good point. A second point is that you don't have so many players to convince. If Apple is convinced, most likely their competitor can be convinced. So it's a good it's a good solution. And actually, Apple is putting pressure on suppliers to have other maker of Fanal than just TSMC. So this is very good for this market. But one thing to take into account is that this market is not for everyone. So far, only two players can really provide a disruptive technology to, uh, as such for a package is TSMC and, and Samsung. OSAPs could come over, but only as followers once this technology can be seen as a standard and it's really not the case yet. So we are all waiting for Samsung reaction to TSMC move. If we talk about the high density market for fanouts, it's also interesting to see what could be beyond uh, application processor. So we mentioned, for example, that if you put a fanout on substrate, you can embed larger dyes. Larger dyes means you can address very demanding and very dense type of solutions, such as uh, processors, GPUs, and now you could potentially benefit for this big macro trend talking about data centers and artificial intelligence. In both cases, you need a lot of uh, 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 packaging performance in order to deal with high bandwidth, with low latency, lower power, and so on and so forth. So very demanding choices. And FanAlt could be potentially positioned as a competitor to 2.5D in the case in which you would be able to remove the silicon interposer and then reduce the price. That would be a very high density FanAlt. The potential is there, no product there at the time, but that's uh, something we start to hear as potential trends. And that's the reason why we came up with the numbers you have here. So you can see that the core fan out is growing steadily because we do expect it to be sustainable. And in yellow, you see the, uh, the high density fan out, which will grow very rapidly if other players and Apple join, join the game. And that's what we, what we do expect. In terms of impact on the different market shares, no surprises there since TSMC is the only one to benefit so far from the high density fan out, they take the major share. You can see that other players have a distant revenues also, but they are more uh, fighting into the core area so far. So you have the historical players providing EWLB a very strong position there. And we do expect ASC together with uh, Deca Solution to take a little bit more market shares in the future. So, before finishing my talk, I would like to give a small uh, amount of information on panel because panel is a very key uh, topic at the moment in fan out. Basically, panel can help to reduce the price even further thanks to having larger, uh, uh, larger substrate. And this is what the, the end customer are asking to fan out suppliers to put the price even lower to make it more competitive. You have big push, for example, from Qualcomm. On this map here, you see that you have different uh, uh, stages. You have people that are doing only wafer people that are doing wafer and studying panel, and people that are already 
panel manufacturers, but only panel manufacturers. Basically, so far at the moment, only Nepes announced that they had a panel capability. Semco seems to have to be uh, uh, on time also. All the others are more investigating. The problem is the panel market is very complex. You have two main trends because you have different ways uh, uh, in entering this market depending on who you are. You have people that are used to the panel thing, so LCD players, PCB players, that could go from a panel solution, panel technology, to a fan-out panel, so basically they have to build a fan-out, and people that are used to fan-out technology on wafer that could try to adapt it to a panel substrate. In both cases, you have advantages and concerns that are mentioned on this slide, uh, but the big problem is, in both cases, you cannot end up easily with a standard because due to the fact that you have so many sizes and so many different strategies in order to obtain a panel on panel, you have different sizes of panel. And due to that, it's very complex to enter this area, which is the reason why we do not see panel yet, at least not yet in volume. NEPES announced that they had a panel line based on LCD technology uh, in the middle of this year, but no volume customer yet, qualifications mainly, and other players are still struggling technically to have to have panel. For example, ASC with Deca Solution uh, is a bit late uh, in terms of what they targeted first to have a panel line. We do expect these players to come next year, but you have a lot of technical challenges to uh, to address before having this kind of level. Technical challenges and also financial ones because to have a line with enough volume to sustain panel size is very complicated. So that's bring us to our conclusions. 2016 was actually a turning point for final packaging, thanks to the entrance of TSMC, but 2017 confirmed the trend. Actually, Apple totally changed the market, and we do see AP in fanout growing. We actually assume that new players will, will also choose the fanout packaging for the AP. The market uh, will maintain its growth. The core market first, because it's confirmed more and more and more and more players are accepting it. And the HD fan out, as we mentioned, because we do expect other customers to join. And the buzz is actually now starting for even more complex application in the networking and HPC, as we mentioned. So even if uh, it's not very clear yet if, if fan out can really address it or not, at least we do see a potential. So in any case, actually, you will have innovation in this area. And one of the innovation is to go to panel to reduce the price. And so now it's not a question if the industry will manage to go to panel, but when, because you have to address all these technical issues. And we do expect that first panel production will come over next year. So lots of things ready to happen in 2018. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much, room for this uh, very interesting pre presentation. Uh, once again, uh, please do not hesitate to ask questions using the Q&A button for the Q&A session at the end of this webcast. So let's continue with a presentation from Stéphane Elisabeth, Advanced Packaging and RF Cost Engineer at System Plus Consulting, uh, with a presentation on reverse engineering and costing analysis on FOWLP components. Please, Stéphane. Thank you, Faisal. So, hi everyone. I'm Stefan Elisabeth, Cost Engineer at System Plus Consulting. I'm in charge of RF and advanced packaging, and my presentation will be about technology and cost of fan out level packaging. So, at System Plus Consulting, we have we have done uh, uh, several uh, reverse costing on F FOWLP component. This component, these components were from different applications, from medical to industrial. And when we look at uh, the activity in those applications, uh, we can see that mobile, mobile application has the higher uh, market share in terms of wafer shipment, uh, mainly due to the high use of Qualcomm's chipsets that using a WLB uh, packaging all around the world and the popularity of the Apple, Apple iPhone. So uh, if we take a look at the main technologies, manufacturer and users, we can see that each uh, technology has, has its own preferred customers. First, 
a WVLB uh, packaging developed by Infineon and licensed to several companies like Nanium or Statship Pack. And at the end, the two big customers are Infineon itself and Qualcomm. Uh, secondly, the, we have the ARCP uh, packaging, who was uh, originally developed by NXP and NEPES and was exclusively, exclusively uh, for NXP. And finally, we have the last player and the new one uh, entering uh, in the, the market in uh, two, uh, 2016, and it was TSMC with its uh, info uh, packaging. And as we know, uh, its, first, its first big customers was Harpole. So uh, for the FANA Waffle Level Packaging, uh, these uh, three uh, technologies have uh, several applications to different original and user manufacturers. Qualcomm, for example, uh, has its chipset, chipset with Adobe VLB uh, packaging, and it supplies big OEMs uh, like Samsung, Apple, or Google's for mobile application, whereas TSMC, uh, with its info, uh, supply just one uh, big, uh, supply, uh, big um, customer, Harper. Uh, in the automotive uh, application, uh, we have uh, Infineon, that supplies companies like Autoliv, uh, Delphi, or Bosch. And uh, in the other hand, we have NXP, uh, that supplies uh, OEMs like Continental. So, uh, at System Plus uh, Consulting, uh, we have published six reports on these packaging technologies, and my presentation will present all of them by application. To begin with, we'll go through automotive, after we will see industrial application, and to finish, we will see mobile application before a quick conclusion. So, uh, in uh, the early of uh, 77 uh, gigahertz uh, radar, uh, we have uh, Infineon that supplies company uh, with uh, with a choice. Uh, the company can go through can go with uh, the Cobb uh, um, application, the chip chip on board, or the UWLB packaging. The die was exactly the same, but uh, the thermal and electrical management uh, that was required uh, was different. Uh, for the COB uh, integration, uh, the two connections were uh, in gold, and the PCB under the die was drilled and filled with copper to dissipate the heat. Unlike uh, in the uh, WPLB application, uh, we just have a copper, uh, copper antenna that was used, and uh, we, had, we, don't, we didn't uh, need any extra steps to handle uh, thermal problems. And today, uh, fan out level, waffle level packaging uh, is well adapted in automotive application. We have a complex stem that, that uh, now developed uh, with uh, this kind of component. We have, uh, for example, the ESCP technology in the, late, the latest uh, ARS4 from Continental, and it's supplied by NXP. Uh, and we can see that in this, uh, this kind of uh, device, we have two transmitters and uh, four receivers that, enable, that, that enabling uh, mid and long range radar in the same device. On the other hand, uh, we have a DDLB uh, technology uh, that it used in Autoliv's radar with only one receiver and transmitter but uh, enabling a multi-mode radar with a power amplifier still in a WLB packaging. And when we take a look at the technology from a cross-section, we can see we have different choices. Uh, we have here uh, the two dies are the, are the same thickness, but a different approach. For the Infineon die, we have a protective layer uh, in top of the packaging and uh, we have a, a step of backgrounding to, to remove uh, the, the extra molding. Unlike the ERCP packaging that uh, only has a copper structure to, um, to increase the rigidity of the, of the packaging and also provide EM uh, shielding. 
And uh, when we take a look at the cost uh, for both uh, radar chip, uh, we reveal that uh, the UWL, uh, EWLB packaging has a, has a higher cost compared to the ARCP packaging. The main uh, differences came, uh, came to the, the, the different uh, extra steps needed uh, in the UWLB uh, packaging. Um, because thanks to the copper uh, structure in the RCP uh, packaging, uh, we didn't ha we we doesn't ha uh, need a precise pick and place step. Whereas in Infineon's process, the pick and place must be accurate, uh, and uh, it, re it required also uh, lateral uh, grinding and uh, the deposition of, of uh, the protective uh, layer. Uh, and now, uh, what about the future of this of the the fan out in this in this uh, in this area? Uh, I try to um, to show you uh, where we will go uh, with the latest automotive radar chip from NXP, uh, the MR three zero zero three. So if we take the three dies from the uh, the previous generation, we have uh, two hundred and fifty five uh, balls needed to supply a full CG uh, transceiver with integrated uh, receiver, transmitter, and VCO. And with a 0 0.5 mm uh, pitch, uh, 72 mm uh, packaging is required. We can think that uh, to handle the EM compatibility issue uh, of the, the, the three dies together, uh, that the final die could have the same, the same area. And taking account this hypothesis, uh, we can easily uh, consider a fanning uh, packaging for, for the next generation. And uh, after estimated the final cost, we can see that uh, we have almost the same, uh, the same final cost for the new, the new and the previous generation, but the, pack, the packaging part is very, very low for the now, uh, it's, it's, low, it's lower for the new generation. But uh, if we can take a look at, uh, and of course, uh, in this ca in this uh, case, the fan out technology will be uh, will have a higher cost and required higher footprint. So, uh, with this hypothesis, the best choice is the fan in for the next generation. But with the emergence of the RF uh, CMOS transceiver. Um, uh, we we have a uh, thermal management uh, that uh, it's uh, more required than the CG uh, transceiver, and I think uh, it could drive uh, the packaging cost uh, to fan out for uh, for this new uh, transceiver. And now, uh, what about the industrial application? Uh, in the industrial industrial application like uh, uh, space or um, uh, like uh, for, for example space, uh, we have extreme condition and uh, specification that uh, is required. And uh, for that, uh, NXP and NIPES has developed uh, the first uh, fan out uh, system in package enabling uh, pack engine package uh, configuration. And thanks to the RCP and the via frame technology from NBS, NXP uh, provide a complete system in one chip with uh, in, in one chip with an application processor, a flash memory, a power management IC, and several passive components in the same packaging. So I, as mentioned before, uh, the packaging is, ba is based on the, the RCP uh, technology and the via frame. The via frame uh, is a piece of PCB uh, with uh, copper via inside, and it's allowed the connection uh, to the top uh, to the, the top memory packaging. And uh, in the packaging process, it's considered as a as a component. Uh, the package uh, the packaging process is almost the same as a standard SCP, uh, like uh, for the NXP radar chipset, for example. But the huge uh, benefit uh, from this kind of approach is uh, that uh, we have a huge uh, footprint gained uh, 
compared to the separate uh, packaging solution. In fact, um, with uh, this packaging, NEPES is uh, managed to get almost a, reduction, a reduction of 16% uh, uh, required area, but with uh, several SMT uh, components, including in the, sa in the same packaging. And uh, now we'll talk about uh, consumer application. Uh, as men, as, uh, as Jer Jerome mentioned, uh, we have a lot of uh, application uh, in, of the uh, fan out uh, packaging in, um, in a smartphone. Uh, for example, as, as I mentioned, uh, Qualcomm has uh, a lot of uh, EWL, EWLB uh, application uh, packaging is in uh, is in, uh, devices uh, for the audio codec IC, the power management, and the RF transceiver. And the big application from uh, Apple is, uh, of course, the, the the application processor, the A10, that using info uh, technology from TSMC. Uh, so first, we will see the Qualcomm chipset and uh, the gain that uh, we we have um, uh, thanks to the EWLB packaging. Um, we can see that uh, for uh, for each uh, die area, uh, all the the ball the the, the in out balls uh, cannot fit the the IC. So we we have to thought uh, to think about a new a new a new way to to spread the the the, 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 the balls, and the fan out was the, the 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 best the best choice. And we can see that um, for the power management IC. Um, uh, the, the the packaging area uh, is a, is a, no the the die uh, represent a seventy two percent of the packaging area, and for the RF uh, transceiver is sixty five percent. So uh, in terms of uh, silicon uh, silicon cost, uh, it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, big uh, big gain. And, uh, and if we, if we, if we look at the cross section to, to see the, the process, uh, we can see that um, um, we have uh, an extra uh, fun, uh, the, mold, the molding is uh, is, is uh, around the, the silicon die, and we have just one uh, RDL uh, and the UBM in, uh, in top of it. So um, to evaluate the, 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 the benefit of the fan out uh, compared to the fan in uh, process, to, so the, which represents the, um, mainly the, the silicon cost, we can see that uh, with, um, so the, if, we, if we consider a die size of uh, uh, 16, per, uh, 16 millimeters, uh, that fits all the the, the, the in out ball. Uh, the die the die cost is uh, higher than um, the the actual uh, the actual uh, die area. After uh, with uh, the, the 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 UWLB process, we can see that uh, per component uh, the packaging is ten uh, cent, the ten cents uh, higher, but uh, in the final, um, the final cost, we have almost 10% saving uh, compared to the, the fanin um, packaging. So here, uh, the best choice is really the fan out uh, packaging. And uh, if we uh, compare the, the, if we um, apply uh, this um, this view to the uh, application processor. Uh, we can see that uh, in the in the market we have uh, several technologies that um, that is represented by uh, by different uh, companies. We have, for example, for first uh, Amco with its uh, through molding via. Uh, the packaging is uh, is a required uh, core uh, core substrate that uh, that um, um, uh, that represent uh, almost uh, the half of the packaging height, but uh, the use of a solderable connection uh, reduced the, 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 the cost. 
um, after uh, Shinko proposed uh, a different uh, type of uh, packaging, and it's mainly used by uh, the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon. Uh, the, so it's required two uh, cordless uh, substrate to, to make the, the connection between the um, memory die, the AP, and the motherboard. Uh, but it's using a uh, copper core uh, solder board uh, to avoid um, um, shrink uh, uh, shrink um, defect or, and increase um, increase uh, the electrical uh, performance. And now uh, TSMC proposed uh, the info packaging uh, with uh, through info via that it's represented by copper pillar uh, around the AP. Uh, the, the benefit is that uh, the copper is uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a very good um, uh, electrical material. Uh, it's very good material for electrical uh, connect connection, and also. Uh, um, it didn't require a PCB substrate here because uh, the process used uh, RDA. So it's relatively uh, cost-effective uh, cost um, packaging uh, in this case. So uh, to conclude, uh, I would say that uh, the, the fan out here is uh, as a several uh, benefits, it replaced the chip on board um, and uh, the chip on board configuration. Uh, it's uh, allowed uh, better uh, system integration, and uh, it could reduce the the packaging height uh, with almost 30%. Um, and also, it's uh, silicon substrate saving. But uh, for higher uh, integration. Uh, for example, wall-in-one uh, packaging. Um, if the die is uh, sufficiently uh, large, uh, it could um, not be uh, the, the better choice compared to the fanning um, application. So uh, thank you all for uh, listening. Thank you, Stefan, for this uh, relevant and uh, very interesting information. So we are now going to wrap up with Q&A session. So we will answer as many questions today as time permits and follow up via email on the remaining questions. Uh, we have uh, interesting and lot of questions. Thank you very much, all attendees. Uh, we have a question. Uh, I guess this one is for you, Jerome. Um, mm -hmm. Any difference between info for A11 against A10? Uh, thanks for the question. Actually, it's a very good one. Uh, indeed, quite a lot of people wanted to see if TSMC made a second generation of their info package in between the two uh, application processor, A10 and A11. Um, we opened it recently to our partner, System Plus Consulting, uh, the company of Stefan, and we didn't see uh, uh, differences in, in the two packages. So, uh, so you have potential different architectures, like potentially uh, uh, different numbers of capacitors, different IPD, but in terms of purely package, uh, it seems to be the same type of package. Okay. Uh, another one, uh, I guess this one also is, is for you. Will Samsung go to FO for their next application process? Well, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's also a very good question. I see uh, I see quite a lot of interest in the application processors, apparently. Um, well, it, it's hard to say because, of course, I'm not reading the minds of Samsung, but but it's very clear that they need to, to reply to the, uh, the uh, strong move of TSMC to provide a fan out for the application processors. So they need to have a good offer if they want to, to catch some markets from Apple. Um, they invested quite a lot uh, together with their partners, Samsung uh, uh, Electromechanics, Semco, into a fan out solution on panel. Uh, the line is almost ready. Actually, it's ready for, for low end products. Uh, but apparently, for application processors, Semco is quite late. So it's questionable if Samsung will be able to choose that solution for next generation or not. So we hear some rumors. Uh, potentially, they may not go to the solution because it's not ready enough. Potentially, they may go to the solution. And potentially, a third way would be to uh, 
to, uh, to choose another partner that would perform fan out on, on wafer. Uh, so it would be a first for Samsung to use an external company. So we hear the three rumors. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot know uh, which choice choice they will make for this APE, but uh, it's still open and it's very clear that lots of pressure is on Samsung to go fan out uh, due to Apple. So we'll see. Same thing uh, as I mentioned, you have to stay tuned in 2018 to see what's going on. But so far, it's really a possibility that Samsung has to has to look at carefully. Okay, thank you, Jerome. Uh, we have a question on radar. I guess, Stefan, please, uh, that, that would be for you, I think. Do you think that Fanout has a future in radar RF CMOS application? Um, yeah, it's a, actually, it's a very good one also. Um, um, a very good one also. Um, um, for me, um, I think uh, it could be it could be a, a, a good a good application for it. And um, as the um, as the the, the silicon is not the really the um, um, sorry. Uh, for the thermal management of the this kind of um, application, uh, I think that a fan out could be a, 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 a good a good choice. Uh, because uh, the die uh, will not really um, be uh, large enough to to use uh, fanin. I think uh, it could be uh, around, I think, uh, maybe uh, 20 millimeter square uh, for a whole uh, transceiver, and uh, um, I think um, so for that. Uh, to 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 allow a, a lot of uh, to spread a lot of connection at the fan out could be uh, the, the the better choice in this kind of uh, application. All right, let's continue on the radar. Um, do you think uh, fan out is still worth it with its high cost compared standard packaging technology in radar application? Um. Um, uh, for me, uh, if we take a look at, uh, we we have to um, uh, to think about the the, the the size of the die and also the the electrical performance that was needed, uh, and finally the the thermal ma the, no, the thermal management is a is a side side key. But uh, for me, if we if we if we go really to a whole integrated. Uh, Component like uh, for the next generation of uh, NXP. Um, if we uh, if if we look at very very good uh, electrical performance uh, without uh, any uh, big uh, study around the, the packaging, uh, Fanout could be uh, could ha still have uh, its uh, its. Um, it's my market share in uh, in this in this kind of application. Okay, okay, we have run of time, so um, the webcast uh, is ending. So within the thank you, Jerome and Stefan. Within the next uh, 24 hours, you will receive an email that will include the recorded session. Please feel free to share the presentation with who will benefit from the information that has been presented, and cite all our analysis and report on how iMicronews.com. So thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have additional questions. You can find your appropriate contact on the last slide of the presentation. Have a good day. Bye-bye.